Before we begin, I want to clarify that although the molecular structure of thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine would look something like this in a nucleotide like this, for the purposes of this video, the nucleotides will be simplified to simple shapes. To start off DNA replication, an enzyme called helicase separates the two parental strands of DNA, breaking apart the hydrogen bonds between DNA base pairs and creating a replication fork. Single-stranded bonding, or SSB proteins, bind to the separated DNA strands and keep them in place, preventing the hydrogen bonds from reconnecting. The two DNA strands are anti-parallel, meaning that the leading strand is going from the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, and the lagging strand is going from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This is significant in DNA replication because it allows complementary base pairing. An enzyme called DNA primase anneals a RNA primer which binds to the 3' prime end of the leading strand. This is called the starting point, or the origin of replication. Now, in a process called elongation, DNA polymerase 3 binds to the same site of the RNA primer and continuously adds new complementary base pairs to the strand from a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. In contrast to the leading strand, the lagging strand has several binded RNA primers which are placed numerous bases apart. In order to fill these gaps, DNA polymerase adds fragments of DNA called Okazaki fragments between the RNA primers from a 3' prime to 5' prime direction. However, this process is still discontinuous, which means that even the newly synthesized Okazaki fragments have small gaps in between them. During the last stage of DNA replication called termination, the RNA primers are removed from the newly created strands and are replaced with corresponding DNA nucleotides by DNA polymerase 1. An enzyme called DNA ligase then joins the gaps between the Okazaki fragments to form one unified strand. One final thing to note is that DNA replication is semi-conservative meaning that the duplicated DNA has one original strand and one new strand. This mechanism is important because it minimizes the errors that may occur during replication. Thank you for watching!